I'm heading down to the coast here to target place. The place season usually runs from March through to the autumn. However, the springtime, March, April, is a particularly good time to target them. Having overwintered in deep water and spawned, they move closer to the shore in the spring and are keen to feed up, which is one reason why the spring months are a good time to target them. The method used is all drift fishing, dragging a bait along the bottom and using the drift chute to position the kayak and slow down the drift. However, on this trip, the conditions developed whereby rather than using the drift chute to slow down the drift, I needed to use the drift chute in a different way. Right, I'm just about to set up my first drift. Now the ground I'm drifting over is basically a clean sandy bottom. However, there are isolated reefs and those reefs are submerged reefs, so they don't show on the on the marine charts. But I've got them listed on my GPS charts. And the idea is that I'll obviously need to drift over the clean ground. Otherwise, I'm just going to get snagged with the bait dragging along the bottom. But what I, what I intend to do, if that drift takes me over some of these rough ground patches, I've got a rod set up with lures to actually see if there's any poll pollock and cod on it as I'm drifting over rather than try to divert the avoid the rough ground so they're not very very great big and you can see I've got one there just listed on the chart there and you can see where I'm drifting here got an onshore breeze at the moment not very strong so I've paddled out and I'll be drifting back to the back to the shore and then in case of paddling out again and back to the shore and maybe try and trying different spots but the baits I've got got with me I've got a mix of baits now of course you can fish many many different baits for place and what I found in the past they're not that fussy in other words if they're there and feeding they'll take most baits but of course lugworm and ragworm worm, tipped with a bit of squid is, is a favoured bait but unfortunately I've got no worms with me today but I've got a mi mix of shellfish and fish baits so what we've got, we've got some strips of sandy or, or launce that I've managed to feather up on previous trips and cut those into nice little strips of about three inches. Got some strips of squid there, about the same size. size. And place will feed on shellfish, so I've got razor clam and uh, they'll take razor clam, so I've got a bit of razor clam there. And what I've done with the razor clam is I've bound it in bait elastic first to make it much, much easier to thread on the hook. Be it, because it's such a soft bait, if it's not bound with bait elastic first, it can be a little bit difficult to thread on the hook. But done like a little sausage like that, it's very, very easy to thread it on the hook, just the same as if you're, if you're threading on a worm. And I've got some peeler crab with me, and of course that's an excellent bait, just some small pieces of peeler crab, again, already bound in bait elastic to make it easier to put on the hook. So what I tend to, I tend to do with the two rods that I'm going to have out, one one side of the kayak and one the other side of the kayak, is to experiment with different baits. And what I'll probably do is maybe have a bit of razor clam and tip it off with a bit of squid or a bit of sandal. And likewise with the peeler crab, maybe a bit of peeler, peeler crab tipped off with a with a small strip of sandal or a small strip of squid, or maybe just try the each bait individually on its own but like I said in the past what I've found if they're here and feeding and that's the key really then they'll t they're, they're not too fussy they're, they'll take most baits with regards to the tackle I've got with me today I've just got a couple of light boat rods and a couple of small multiplier reels but as regards to the rig down at the end there's a video I've done and it's called a drift fishing for place rig and what I'll do, for those of you that are interested in the rig that I'm using, I'll pop it up in the top right hand corner of the screen now. But basically it's just a straight running ledger, few beads, small hook and, and pretty simple really. Well that's the first rod baited up and on this one I'm just going to start off with a little bit of razor clam and then just tip it off with a small, small fillet of sand eel. Well, the first rig's down but what I'm going to do is hit the bottom but I'm not going to engage the reel straight away I'm going to let out just let it as I drift drift along backwards here back to the shore 
I'm just going to let out plenty of plenty of slack just to get the baits well away from the kayak rather than fish, fishing directly under the kayak. I'm fishing in about 37 feet of water at the moment but I'll be drifting back towards the shore to a, down to about 15 feet. So I'm going to try and keep the baits well away, well away from the kayak. On the second rod, what I've done, I've put a bit of a small bit of peeler crab on and just tipped it off with a small strip of squid. Well, that's it now, both rods out, dragging the bait along the bottom, and hopefully there'll be one or two place around. Just a matter of sitting back now and enjoying the fantastic scenery. I've had a few drifts now for nothing and it looks like I've got my first bite on the rod on the left hand side side of the kayak here. It's to the rod tip is just, just nudging a bit. It's stopped nudging at the moment so I'm just going to give it give it a bit of time just to make sure there is something on. I mean, yeah it looks like there is something on. I mean it could be it could be a dogfish of course but hopefully hopefully it's a place. Yep. Yeah, we've definitely got got something here. And I've got, as I said earlier, I've got different uh, different baits on the on each rod. Doesn't feel like a dogfish. But you never know, of course. But yeah, I've had this is about the fourth drift, and I've had absolutely no bites at all until now. But we're we're into the flooding tide a bit more now, and let's see what this is. And yeah, fant that's absolutely fantastic. We've got our first we've got our first place. Well, that may well be the last place, of course. Well, I can't remember. Yeah, it's not a comes. Not a bad place. And there you go. Lovely place. Lovely spring place. Well, there's not much left of the bait, but that play, place took the cocktail of a little bit of peeler crab. I just had a bit of peeler crab, only about inch, inch and a quarter, just to cover the shank of the hook there. And then about a three inch strip of sand eel fillet. Well, there it is. Lovely spring place. It's my first of the year. It's getting towards the end of March now, and I'll have a, a few more trips, hopefully in April after the spring place. And this one's well over the size limit. This one measured 40 centimetres, so it's well over the size limit is 27 centimetres here in Cornwall, although I don't like, like taking them in unless they're at least 30 centimetres. So that's fantastic. So I'm going to thoroughly enjoy eating that. So we get back down, like I said, that was caught on the little bit of peeler crab and a little sand eel fillet. So we'll put the same on again and uh, see if I can pick up another one. But e even if it's the only place of the day, I'm really pleased to get my first, first place of the year. Those of you that have watched my videos in the past will know that I've talked many, many times about using a drift chute when drift fishing whether it be drift fishing over a specific mark, such as a reef or a wreck, or drift fish, fishing like I'm doing today, just drifting along here with a couple of rods out, dragging a bait along the bottom. Now, the couple of reasons I use the drift, like to use a drift chute is when you're drifting and there's a bit of a breeze and a bit of a swell, if I have the drift chute deployed at, this, at the bow, what that does, it keeps my bow, it turns my bow into that breeze and into that swell rather than being turned broadside on and it's much much more comfortable and then of course the other reason is that that it slows me down it stops me drifting too quick now when I'm doing this type of fishing with a couple of rods out also if I have if, if there was a bit of a bit of a breeze pushing me along by having it at the bow there I'm sitting in my seat facing the swell facing the breeze and I've got the couple of rods out and in effect I'm drifting backwards and it's nice to have the lines running away from me and I can sit in my seat and see the see those lines 
clearly running away from me. And again, much, much more comfortable to fish. But the problem I've got today is, as you can see, it's absolutely flat calm. There's no swell and there's no breeze. And the only drift I've got is with the tide and that drift is not very quick. So here's a little tip for you as how you can use the drift chute in flat calm conditions when you want to drift to, and oh, it looks like I might have got another bite there, but we'll, that's okay, we'll give it some time. You can use the drift chute to actually pull you along with the tide when there's little or no movement like today. And so what I've done today, I've got it actually deployed at the stern there. And just got it on a short rope rope today. So what's happening, I'm being, the drift chute is being picked up by the tide and it's pulling me along. And again, because I've got it at the, st I've got it at the stern, yeah, we've definitely got another bite there. Because I've got it at the stern, again, it's pulling me backwards and I can sit in my seat here looking at these two rods and it's all very comfortable. So there's a tip for you. You can also use the drift chute in flat calm conditions when you're struggling to get a drift. Put your drift chute out, it'll pick up the tide and you'll be pulled along by the tide. So I better get and deal with that bite and hopefully it's another place. Well, it's definitely, yeah, it looks like a place bite to me. Yep, we got another place. Unfortunately, I got a bit of a tangle as well with the other line, but never mind. No, that's that's come off now. Yeah, nice one. Well, that's it. The light's starting to fade now, so I've got to get myself packed up and head on in. So if you've never tried place fishing before, drifting for place before, from the kayak or from a boat, give it a go. Particularly in the springtime, certainly here in Cornwall, March, April is a great time of year to target them. You can get them, of course, right the way through the summer and into the autumn. But the March, April, when they've moved in from deeper water into the shallower water closer to shore they're, they're keen to feed and it's and you've got good opportunity to to pick one or two up so i'm pleased to get my first couple of place of the year i'll probably have another go in april and who knows may, may pick up more place later on in the year when i'm fishing for other species like turbot so once again i hope you found that useful and many many thanks for watching <laughs>